Ron May, a name that's both new and familiar. I thought Member 4, Polka Kakamond, had gotten rid of most of the Society members. I didn't have a lot of hope for this. Oh, look who's here. You're back. <laughs> This is a summit between three geniuses. It's a special time. All departments are preparing to welcome distinguished guests from the Genius Society. Madame Ron May doesn't like fanfare and probably wouldn't appreciate a crowd to welcome her, so I asked the researchers to keep things simple. I took her to see the portraits of the Society members a few days ago. I wanted to have the researchers make one for her as well, but she declined the offer. I don't get it. Whatever. As long as she's happy. I heard Miss Ron May likes snacks and pastries, so I asked the researchers to prepare some traditional desserts from the blue. All of them seem to tickle her fancy. Of course! Go find her yourself. She borrowed the face flame to do some research as soon as she got here. I haven't seen a trace of her since. Miss Ron May is the very image of a scholar. I heard she once took a little vacation on a desert planet. By the time she left, she'd miraculously created a boom in the local ecology. She just wanted somewhere uninhabited to experiment with her life spiral system. Ron May is certainly very talented, but she hardly interacts with anyone. She lives like a hermit. Pity. Anyway, what more needs to be said for someone smart enough to become Herda's research partner, hmm? Hurry up and head out! Huh? See if you can find her. I'm not sure, but she doesn't seem to get around much. She spends most of her time between the Master Control Zone and the Railway Platform. Maybe you can start your search there. There's someone next to the railway platform. And could she be? I have a feeling we're on the right track. I'm gonna check the data when I get back. <laughs> I didn't startle you. This is a work habit of mine. Using touch to open my senses and letting the details of your biological existence flood into my brain helps me understand your construction as a living organism. Such is the basis of deconstruction and reconstruction. Do not be concerned. You are very healthy. In fact, impeccably so. A perfect experimental specimen. I like perfect experimental specimens. Yes, I'm happy to meet you too. 
We've met before in the simulated universe. I expect the views here had me lost in thought. I don't usually go in and out of the space station and only discovered today that it was blessed with such calm, open views. It is a wonderful fit for the sweet fragrance of lotus leaves, plum blossoms, sticky rice, and frosting sugar. Come here. Look. The blue planet is directly below us. It is so full of life. This dessert is very delicious. Here, take half. Delicious desserts remind people of how flowers look when they bloom. Ingest this dessert one bite at a time, and the sweetness will linger in your mouth. I hope you like it too. So, what do you think? I can certainly prepare more for you. It's become somewhat of a tradition to bring strawberry pastries when I visit Stephen Lloyd. His attendance seems quite dependent on them. Hmm, an outstanding dessert. Ten grams of cubed sugar, one dried and salt-preserved plum blossom. Baking and cooking are the same as nurturing a universe. The heat must be controlled, planning must be meticulous, and one must not panic. No matter what happens. Unfortunately, there are still too many people in the space station. The clamor is not fitting for desserts. By the way, do you remember what my research is about? No. My research area is short stories about toilets. Huh? What's going on? What, what am I talking about? <laughs> I see. What a cute hobby. But remember, the next time something like this happens, it's crucial to mask your expression until you've ascertained the situation. If not, you'll be full of weaknesses that others can see through. Let's try again. Now, what else would you like to ask? The dessert was tasty, I would like more. <sighs> Why can't I say what I want to say? <laughs> you have quite the appetite. All right, I'll give you the recipe. Come and have a walk with me. A stroll is the most appropriate post-dessert activity. As the masses depart, there's an enveloping calm here. Just like in the no man's land I've entered to in the past. Can you imagine a completely lifeless world? From there, you can glimpse the stars that lie at the very edge of the horizon. Following its celestial trajectory, the Great Teal Star illuminates an endless sea of white across both the sky and land. My mother and I navigated calm glaciers, looking for signs of life on that world, and encountered many bizarre phenomena. It was like finding the single correct piece in a mountain of jigsaw pieces. And the process was convoluted and unimaginably difficult, but it was touching and enthralling as well. My apologies. It appears my words have left you perplexed. Please. Don't be on edge. I bear no ill will. I haven't interfered with your linguistic faculties. Such an act would be impolite. I merely made a minor adjustment. A few days ago, I made my interest in you known to Herta. My intention is for you to serve as an assistant. Based on our interactions within the simulated universe, I firmly believe you fit the bill. I find extending trust beyond myself is challenging. A single error in detailed research can generate issues, and I despise matters that escape my control. Therefore, I added anti-truth serum to this dessert. It will not harm you. However, you will be unable to say what you truly think when answering questions related to me. Treat it as a layer of protection. This will shield my research and your personal safety. Once the problems have been dealt with, I'll give you the antidote. I can also reward you as compensation for being my assistant. I will fulfill your every wish. 
Then I'll grant you even greater rewards. <sighs> when I first arrived on the space station, I borrowed the face flame from Herta. It's an invention of member number 29 circle. I hope to be enlightened by other society members' results. A surge of creativity led me to explore the cultivation of life on the space station. In my imagination, these life forms would be a new variety that are born as geniuses. I plan to name them after Lambda, member number 8 of the Genius Society. I don't know where it went wrong. They possess their own sentience, but are nowhere near geniuses. Moreover, my free-range approach seems to have backfired. In a lab leak incident a few days ago, some of these little life forms ran away and scattered all over the space station. I do not wish for Herta or Asta to be involved in this. Therefore, I'm hoping you can assist in recovering these little life forms. I do trust you. The researchers are still treating these entities as visitors. I want to steer clear of making my presence known, so as not to cause undue disturbances. I entrust this to you. Once the little life forms are collected, simply find a proper place for them. The researchers in the Department of Ecology should know about this and provide you with suitable advice. place where the space station stores dangerous experimental results? Why would anyone want to know that? Wait, did someone send you here to try to get things out of me? I'm not doing any private business on the space station. I have absolutely no knowledge of any special hiding places. And I certainly haven't sold any old junk rare treasures or discarded curios or anything like that. You're so cute! <laughs> Can I get an autograph? So, I really can't say anything about her. Autograph? What are you on about? You're freaking me out! <sighs> I won't talk to you if you don't tell me why you're here. Oh, that. You've got pretty good contacts if you know that already. The space station is a mess. Everyone's already swamped as it is. And now, out of nowhere, there's a bunch of little creatures popping up. If you want to solve the problem, go check out the storage zone. Then you'll understand. There are so many people. This seems to be the place. Ron May. Member 81 of the Genius Society, a resounding name in science and the veritable epitome of life form cultivation. Researchers here have heard so much about her for so long. But once she arrived on the space station, she just took over everything. And what did Madame Herta do? Absolutely nothing. Yes, she's treating this place like her backyard. She's leaving her research notes all over the floor. The end result? Everyone's obsessed with getting their hands on them. Molten cheese tart is the best. Its outlook is infectious. Its positive mood has influenced us all. What's our slogan again? One, stop complaining. Change your attitude and use the delicious molten cheese tart to stop the flow of negative energy. Two, energize yourself, increase your capacity for action, and walk on the path of a molten cheese tart's absolute conviction. Our creed, molten cheese tart is the best. Oh, praise be. You don't know? Molten Cheese Tart is Madame Ron May's top fan. This is how it preaches. Those who offer their love are expressing admiration and affection for Miss Ron May. 
Oh, let me tell you something. Mr. Scrooge's followers are all very logical, but they're just awaiting the arrival of the mechanical aristocracy. Hmm. Since you're so interested, I'll tell you how to secure an audience with the honorable molten cheese tart. You'll need to work hard to get there. You need to plaster hearts wherever Madame Ron May has been. If you're sincere enough, the honorable molten cheese tart will show itself. <laughs> I heard Madame Ronmay is very picky when it comes to snacks. Uh, do you know what her favorites are? I don't know about her, but I love fermented herring. So, I really can't say anything about her. Did I ask about your favorites? Also, that's disgusting. What's wrong with you? The little life form Ron May made. I am humbled to meet the molten cheese tart. <gasps> what are you frozen in place for? Oh, you don't understand the honorable tart. That's okay. No worries for situations like this. We've specifically concocted a synesthesia beacon. Wakaka! I'm a genius. A genius among geniuses! That was way too risky. Molten Cheese Tart says, Madame Ronme has finally recognized my ingenuity. <coughs> Molten Cheese Tart says, does Madame Ronme recognize me as a masterpiece? <coughs> Molten Cheese Tart says, Madame Ronme still has not recognized me as a life form that passes the requirements. I need to work harder. Oh, such an enthusiastic molten cheese tart. There's a kind of attachment reserved for the creator. To the world, you are but one person. But to me, you are the entire world. Oh, Madame Ronme. Hey, you! Yes, you! Don't you have anything you want to say to molten cheese tart? You should at least express how you would like to follow Molten Cheese Tart. We wouldn't want to mistake you for an agent of gray bean paste, would we? Good! You have great taste! You see, the Honorable Molten Cheese Tart has always been fighting against gray bean paste in terms of flavor. The Honorable Molten Cheese Tart is a firm believer that people's lives need to be optimistic. They both hope to receive Madame Ron May's recognition and have been working so hard. Of course. It's not like we have any followers of gray bean paste here. Uh, all the ones who came in to stir up trouble have been converted by us. They went from refusing molten cheese tart to loving it. This is called conceptual annexation of taste. Mm, it's genuinely puzzling. 
despite molten cheese tart's remarkable qualities. Why hasn't Madame Ron May acknowledged it? It's clear that it yearns for her love. Love from the creator to her creation? Familiar love? Doesn't sound right. Romantic love? Definitely not. I don't know. Expecting me to understand love is like asking me to map the farthest reaches of the universe. Remember, as long as love is your compass, you're on the right track. And in the wise words of the Honorable Molten Cheese Tart, love must be shouted from the rooftops. That, that depends if the Honorable Tart agrees to it. Oh? The Honorable Molten Cheese Tart has agreed. You're here. Herta called Skrulem and I to the space station to discuss some important topics. She also sent an invite to Steven, but he didn't reply and Herta didn't seem to want to wait any longer. And now, I wish for you to attend this meeting with me. I don't want Herta to worry herself over these frivolous matters, even though she probably wouldn't care anyway. Just in case, I want someone who will be on my side. In other words, you. Help me. It'll be easy. Just remember, my secret stays with you, don't pry too much, and keep your expressions in check. All right, let's go. Hi, Ron May. I've been waiting for you. Oh, you're here too? Looks like you two have become quite friendly. It's good to see you, sir. Affirmation. This reunion has happened earlier than my calculations predicted. Though you weren't invited, I welcome you to remember this historical moment. How long has it been since three geniuses were in the same room together? And how long will we have to wait for it to happen again? Hmm. Affirmative. Discounting our discussions on the simulated universe, our interactions are scarce. I look forward to the innovative ideas that may emerge from this juxtaposition of minds. Let me get straight to the point. I think it's time to find another partner for the simulated universe. You wish to kick Steven out? Of course not. Steven doesn't want to get involved and voted to abstain. Oh, whatever. Look, I respect the way people want to live, but he doesn't have the chance to be involved in this decision-making anymore. Question. Are we introducing a fifth partner for the simulated universe? Yes! 
yes, a fifth genius. The reason for our gathering is clear to everyone present. What else could prompt such a gathering of brilliant minds except for the answer? No one can refuse the secret of the eons. Not even Xandar will definitely get a response. What if the responder is Polka Kakamond? That'd be great! Hey, Lord of Silence, are you listening? I'm member number 83, Herda, and I want to meet you. I believe you and I will have a lot to talk about. It's unlikely we'll hear from Polka Kakamond. She's been off the grid for quite some time. Probability, member number 64, Dr. Primitive, may appear. That's a hard pass. Given Dr. Primitive's shady research practices and his tussle with the Galaxy Rangers, the IPC will surely turn this into a media circus. He can get lost. I'd prefer it if the simulated universe remained scandal-free. What about you, Chingtu? Are you still in touch with her, Ronmei? Is she still alive? Can we ask him to leave if we are to discuss this topic? The process will be long and boring. There's no need to take up other people's time. Of course! You brought him in after all. It's up to you. All right. Let me walk you out. And... what the heck is this? Seems like a programming error. Oh, this fragment of Ron May. Have you seen it in the simulated universe before? The simulated universe is my home. <sighs> I'm speaking nonsense again. It's probably an isolated glitch. <sighs> Fine. I'm used to turning a blind eye to these things. It makes life easier. I am curious, though. Are you going to keep it, Ronme? I probably will. Records indicate he likes this occurrence. All right, I agree. As long as it helps you with your research, you can do whatever you want. Come along. I'll see you out. It appears I was overthinking things. Impulsive behavior is pretty characteristic of her, after all. Thankfully, it was just a minor scare. Still, meetings give me such a headache. It seems I'll have to stay put for a while. I see that you've recovered the life form in the Master Control Zone. Thank you. Well done. I was simply being overly cautious. It is a habit of mine. Apologies. There are some things that I must tell you now. If I wait for the meeting to finish, then it might be too late. The retrieval of my life forms isn't complete yet. There's more than just one, and some are stored in a sealed zone. Herta uses that place to welcome visitors from across the stars, or to welcome members of the Genius Society. However, due to the Legion's invasion, it is no longer open to the public. And now my headache is stored there. There's much you don't know about the space station, and even more about Herta. But there is some information I can give you. That place is also used to welcome non-humanoid visitors, and as a shuttle that connects to outer space. I'm giving you my access card. Give me your hand, and I'll input your fingerprint into it. Stay vigilant, Assistant. Should you come across a threat you can't handle, just alert me. I'll come to your aid no matter what. Remember, there is a giant incubator in the middle of the zone. That's where my headache is stored. Once you're back, come find me on the railway platform. Then you'll understand everything. What would a sealed zone look like?
Buzz. What's up with this unit? It looks different from the one in the master control zone. Buzz, Madam Herta, open zone. Buzz, to welcome alien species, galactic visitors. High risk zone. Buzz, service staff, inorganic life forms. Buzz, permission status. Madam Ron May, permissions granted. Madam Herta, fine. As long as it keeps her happy. Buzz. Buzz. I am a twin of the rice frying robot. I am the leftover rice frying robot. Buzz. Maintain zone operation. Job of inorganic life forms. Buzz. Welcome. Buzz. Visitor. How can I help? Fry leftover rice. Buzz. Fry leftover rice. Buzz. Welcome. Visitor, what do you need? Buzz. Conclusion. You cannot enter. Probability 50%. Other paths are open. Assessment. Seeking directions. Buzz. Suggestion. Proceed to basement. Locate records of cultivation path. Buzz. Fascinating. Unfortunately, before the research could be completed, it vanished. I've initiated new attempts. The growth status of the two samples this time is promising. I incorporated personal taste preferences into the concept, but I'm uncertain about the outcome of such an action. They simultaneously possess two sets of emotional traits. They are at once cute, weak, sentimental, and sensitive yet are also fierce, instigating, demanding, and confident. Interestingly, they also possess a kind of inclination, a yearning for their creator. It manifests as a natural, inherent emotion, similar to that of a baby towards its mother, life towards sustenance, or the peculiar bond between humans. Huh? What's that sound out there? <coughs> this is the headache Rung they mentioned? It's just a different flavor. negative energy. Don't like negative energy. place for this little one. That sound seems to be from that locked room. How do I get in?
I never imagined there'd be so many of them. The final days that member number 23, Acha, spent in the mechanical city showed me that even the longest of lives, such as hers, have a limit. I'm now certain that the outcome of this cultivation is... failure. Life can exist in thousands of different forms, which means the form itself has no purpose. These life forms are very advanced in their own concepts, and can even trigger chain reactions such as synesthesia, but... That is not what I desire. I'm starting to feel lost. Perhaps the question, what is the essence of life? Never had an answer. Member one, Sandar, have you ever felt this lost? Or resigned? Are you telling me to keep going? Life is countless and varied in form. I firmly believe in that. Its beauty is like a myriad of flowers and I want to pluck the one that never wilts. The patterns of all things always have complicated and enchanting exteriors, while their inner essences remain simple and plain. If we were to trace things back to their roots, just one equation would be enough to solve the confusion of all life. Ever since I was a child, I have always delighted in observing aspects of microscopic creatures, such as the speed with which slime molds devour objects. I have also gazed far and wide across the macroscopic world, investigating the progress of the universe up to this day. It was all very simple. I wish to discover the true essence of life, something that all individuals possess unknowingly, whether it is the materialism of their existence or an unknown entity beyond corporeal realms. <sighs> to avoid blind faith in science, I cautiously raised a query. Would Ram May be able to peel away external influences? Just like pinpointing a coordinate, would she be able to uncover life's most primordial and beautiful form of existence? I thought of one life form that would truly lie beyond my reach. And that is... Yeah. Sounds fitting. Stay here for a bit. Did something just open? Permissions. Please submit your ID. Buzz. Permissions granted. Buzz. Select from the below services. 1. Check historical incubation records. 2. Inorganic lifeform companionship chat service. Is this? I thought of one life form that would truly lie beyond my reach. And that is... an emanator. I cannot comprehend what an emanator is. Scholars view them as the executors of the Eon's power. So, when did it begin? And at what point did they become closer to the Eons than any other life form? At first, I tried to create a genius. I failed. That question has no solution yet, and a long journey of discovery still lies ahead. However, erudition isn't the only path in the universe. If we set logic aside, would there be more primitive and pure emanators on other paths? Of course there would be... Casey Rhonda. 
I was able to see the beginning and end of the swarm disaster through the simulated universe, obtain data on the Imperator and Sectorum and their descendants, replicate them, nurture them, and create a brand new scientific discipline. It is a logical decision. I will certainly succeed. The entity that I reconstruct will bloom into a life never before seen. Will Herta and Skrulem like this experiment? Most likely not. Therefore, before they realize what I am doing, I must hurry my work, as well as find a fitting assistant. Permission granted. Buzz. Select from the below services. One, check visitor records. Two, open incubator entrance. Permission granted. Buzz. That sound's coming from above. Huh? There's someone in the distance. Who is that? A genius move. And how will you counter it? <sighs> Only an idiot would ask such a question. Just move this here. Hmm. <sighs> you look distressed. Something the matter? <clears throat> if that's the case, you better get thinking. Are you waiting for a sign? Time is ticking. Descend via the elevator. What you seek is there. Have you considered whether the answer to your question will be of any relevance to our current predicament? If a question is of no help, then don't ask it. Time is clearly precious to the both of us. Never mind. Allow me to clarify something. I know exactly who you are. And I'm aware you are in Ron May's employ. This was not my intended destination. I just happened to find my way here during my visit and saw what she was up to. My goals are roughly aligned with yours. Since you're here, I won't intercede. But should you fail, I will be forced to prevent some avoidable misfortunes. That's all you need to know. Just two paragraphs. Very effective communication. I can't stand discourtesy, even when it comes from myself. The real Ron May's creation is hidden in the giant incubator below us. Go. Take the elevator and bear witness to this genius masterpiece. Emanator of Propagation Clone? How can that be? Okay. Do not 
be afraid. We've entered the storm. To guard and defend. Crush them. Lance ablaze. Lance! Forward! Heaven, sir. <laughs> Quick! Awaken the world-cleansing dragon. <laughs> Lend me your strength. I'm on guard. Yes. Not yet. See, it's not over. The dragon will always return. Lend me your strength. I sense a storm. We've entered the storm. To guard and defend. Crush them! <laughs> Time to question your prescription! Assistance is timely. Weaken the world cleansing dragon! <laughs> was unable to sustain its own existence and vanished as if it had never been born. Hmm. The threat is over. Time to get going. Is it over? I... I need to get some answers out of Wrong May. The meeting of geniuses is over. As for the future of the simulated universe, that conclusion isn't important. What's important is your task. You look upset, correct? I regret my actions. There's no defending what I've done. Time and again, my experiments have fallen short, and they've always yielded predictable results. I made a clone, but it doesn't hold a candle to the Emanator. Exactly as predicted. 56 seconds on the dot. Restrained by time and place, its code of life could only be considered an incomplete attempt. I managed to replicate the moment it was born. However, it would soon disappear and be reduced to particles. Like every living being, it inevitably faced its demise as it journeyed towards the end. I find no fault in that. However, even the briefest life should have meaning. I want to know the limits of its capacity. It will indicate how far I've gone in a field completely incomprehensible to me. And it was a minuscule step, just as I had predicted. Indeed, this is how I keep the distractions at bay. I have to admit that research once made me obsessive. That wasn't a good period in my life. Though now I navigate it much more smoothly. I must admit, I'm not fond of scenarios where everything aligns perfectly with my expectations. An experiment should have its unforeseen twists. That's where the joy lies. Even the most predictable storylines can have their pleasant surprises. I have to admit that these little ones born in the process sometimes move me. I see a human-like response in them. It is a concept completely opposite to that of divinity. They have emotions. 
Emotions may be either positive or negative. However, the love rooted in the depths of their heart is eternal and unchanging. They are still a long way from becoming geniuses, and are therefore unable to discern whether this love is one of friendship, romance, or familial love. That being said, can even geniuses tell the difference? I cannot, at least. I do not understand what love is, and cannot respond to their feelings. Do you believe my actions were wrong? There's no need to tell me your answer. I just felt like asking the question. How should I take care of them? Perhaps leaving them at the space station is the best choice. Do I seem irresponsible? I'm sorry. I am often at a loss as to how to face my own creations. The effects of the anti-truth serum will also wear off. If others mention me to you in the future, you can answer however you like. Or even pretend you never knew me. After all, your memory of me will soon dissipate like smoke. Over time, hidden truths tend to surface. Past traumas, which I'd rather leave behind, have made me skeptical about trusting anyone but myself. If I do not want a secret revealed, the most foolproof way is to destroy it. The anti-truth serum will make you forget the brief period we spent together. It won't take effect immediately. It is a slow, intangible process, like the sweet fragrance of lotus leaves, plum blossom, sticky rice, and frosting sugar. Perhaps you'll remember someone performed selfish experiments on the space station, but you will no longer remember their identity. Perhaps we'll meet again someday, but... You won't be able to connect me with the recollection. That way, the connection between life forms will be erased. Friendships, secrets, grudges, lies. All will disappear. It will make our lives more relaxing. I believe you. Screwlem will stay on the space station for a while longer. He and Herta still have problems they need to solve. As for me, I'm leaving soon and won't bother with goodbyes. Do you still remember the No Man's Land I mentioned? I'm considering a solo trip back there during my research downtime, just to see how things are. I miss member number 55 Yu Qingtu sometimes. She used to always make something delicious for me to drink every time we parted ways. I hope I won't meet member number four Polka Kakamond. That would be quite troublesome. Who knows when the next gathering of geniuses will be? Do you have anything else you want to say to me? I find that difficult to answer. I thank you, Mr. Assistant. If fate allows and you're interested, upon our next meeting... We could journey to No Man's Land and traverse its tranquil glaciers. Though I suppose it wouldn't be No Man's Land anymore. What a conundrum. Thank you.